Now we understand how multiple electrons can exist around an atom. They go into the various orbitals, and they fill the various orbitals following some fairly specific rules. For instance, the Pauli exclusion principle says no two electrons should have the same four quantum numbers. At least one quantum number has to be different. M sub s, m sub l, n, or m l has to be different. Now, also Hund's rule says electrons fill orbitals that are degenerate with maximum multiplicity. That means all the spins stay parallel until I have to pair up. So the magnetism adds, the little m sub s's add until you are forced to pair them up. So those two rules allow us to catalog the electrons as they fill elements on the periodic table. So let's actually do that. Here's the first few elements on the periodic table. Hydrogen has one electron. It will enter the 1s, the lowest available orbital, and will give the electron configuration 1s1 to hydrogen. Now hydrogen will be slightly magnetic because that unpaired electron imparts a magnetism to the whole atom. It's called a paramagnetic species. Hydrogen is paramagnetic in its atomic state. Helium has paired electrons because the next electron will go in the 1s orbital paired up. The 2s orbital is higher in energy, so it's cheaper to spend that little energy to pair than to put the energy in the higher 2s orbital. So helium will have the electronic configuration 1s2 and not be magnetic. Lithium with three electrons will have three protons in its nucleus, so neutral lithium has three electrons. Three electrons, the third goes into the 2s orbital, giving you a 1s2, 2s1 configuration that's magnetic. Beryllium will pair the 2s. Now, it pairs the 2s because the 2p, as you fill the 1s and the 2s orbitals, the 2p starts to get slightly higher in energy because of some shielding effects we'll talk about later. So it's cheaper to put 2s paired than to put an electron in the higher energy 2p. So we're going to have 1s1 or 1s2, 2s2 for beryllium, and that will not be magnetic, whereas boron with yet another electron, five total electrons, will go into the 2p orbital, the first available 2p orbital, with an unpaired spin and be magnetic. Now we can continue. Here's carbon and nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. And you'll see that carbon has maximum multiplicity. The 2p orbitals are the same energy, so the spins go in parallel. Nitrogen, same thing, three unpaired electrons. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, three times as magnetic as carbon, which is more magnetic than boron. In fact, that's how we can tell Hund's rules being followed. Nitrogen is more magnetic than carbon, which is more magnetic than boron. So the spins are going in parallel. We can continue with fluorine, neon, and we see that the electrons start to pair in the 2s and 2p orbitals. So neon now has 2p6. All the electrons are paired in the p shell. Neon is not magnetic. But sodium, the next element on the periodic table, will have one more electron. And now we can start to use a shorthand in our electronic configurations. We can say sodium has all the electrons that neon has, plus a 3s1. And of course, an unpaired electron gives you a magnetic state. So what we're doing is we're filling up the periodic table. And we can look at the periodic table and now start to understand how it works. So hydrogen and helium, 1s1, 1s2. Now lithium and beryllium will have 2s1, 2s2. And when I get to boron, I start to fill the p orbitals. p1, p2, p3, p4, p5, p6. So you can see the periodic table is set up to accommodate. It reflects this quantum mechanical structure, these orbitals, about the atoms. You can see that the s filling elements, that is, their highest energy electrons are s, are here. This block here of six, 
It's not coincidental at six. There's six elements here because there are six p electrons, three orbitals, two electrons in each. This group in the middle is where the d electrons. So there should be 10 here. There's five equivalent d orbitals. That'll give you 10 electrons that will fill the periodic table from left to right here with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 d electrons. When I go to f, I have 14 electrons filling up seven equivalent orbitals. So we can see that the periodic table reflects the quantum mechanical structure of atoms. And now we understand that. We can move on now from looking at the periodic table to the elements themselves and see how those electronic configurations affect the properties of atoms.